Okay, so here's your scale. Now that, if that scale was a book, it would have seven chapters. The first chapter, starting on the first note, the one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That's called Ionian mode. Then you get the second chapter, or Dorian mode. Second mode. And uh, third, Phrygian. Lydian on the fourth. Mixolydian on the five. Aeolian or natural minor scale. So this mode starting on the six has got two names. Aeolian and natural minor. And then your seventh mode is Locrian. From the seventh degree. So that opens just like a million questions. And like, uh, you know, like what are they used for is the first one. And, uh, I always try to say the same stock answer, but I can't, no, the modes are multi-purpose tool, you know, they're like a screwdriver, like their main purpose is to turn a screw, but you can also stir some paint with it or, you know, stab a, stab a bad guy or you know, do whatever you can with it. You need to poke a hole. Um, and the modes are kind of like that. They're just there for utility. And uh, we can get into some of their functions. Like one of them, it's like, the, the I guess the first thing I want to talk about is the distinct flavor each one has. And, uh, you know, it's like curry. You know, it doesn't matter if you have curry chicken, curry goat, curry lamb. It's, it all just tastes like curry. And that's what modes are like. Each one just has a, they're not all taste like curry. They all each have their own flavor. You know, one might be minty and the other one might be, I don't know, sweet. But, uh. We all have our own feeling for what each flavor is, but Ionian mode just sounds like it's the main, it's kind of the main tonal, like just do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Da, 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 da. It's just your regular, you know, kindergarten scale, not kindergarten scale, major scale, that's Ionian, but most people just call that a major scale sound, and that's fine. And uh, second mode, Dorian B, is a minor mode. You know, like the chord that is formed on the B, if you use this leapfrogging method, root, third, fifth, is a minor chord, because you've got that distance of a minor third rather than a major third. So this one has a very jazzy or open It's kind of 
that a cowboy sound? We were just watching Once Upon a Time in the West on uh, whatever, Netflix or something. And uh, just, the, you know, we had heard the soundtrack. We have the soundtrack on vinyl, which is, we would listen to that while, me and Donna would listen to that while we were playing chess. And, uh, um, but then it was kind of a, interesting treat to actually see the movie and how all the motifs line up with characters anyway um so your dorian has got a very open sound and the reason is it's symmetrical like if you look from here to here oh this is, we're getting into the inside shit here it's the same distance from the tonic or from the tonic like the intervals are the same like you get a a whole tone and a whole tone and then a semitone and a whole tone and it's the only mode I think that's like that yeah I'm sure it is the only mode that's kind of folds in on itself and that's why it kind of has this openness because it's it's got a symmetry and it doesn't resolve upward or downward like if you listen to a regular do, 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 And uh, that's, uh, but this one is more, doesn't really resolve. It just kind of hangs and a lot of times you'll play like, You kind of play this B minor to E progression. And that kind of, each mode kind of has certain chord gems that bring out the color of it. But if you notice, if I'm playing in Dorian, it's, it's not really going anywhere. It's just like pacing the cage. It's just, going from one foot to the other, it's not traveling as much as uh, the major or the Ionian mode. And uh, examples of tunes that have a Dorian, you know, Down by the River by Neil Young, that. Be on my side, I'll be on your side, babe. Ain't no reason for you to hide. And then, uh, but if you all of a sudden go back to the A, it just, you know, the mode is gone and you're back into, into the regular tonality. So that's modes. It's, if you want a little rule, it's like, you know, get going on the chord of the mode. If you're on B minor, the two Dorian. Just play a B minor chord and don't play the A, you know? Or if you do play the A, don't resolve to the A. And uh, just focus. Man, I'm out of tune. Um, okay, let's go to the three mode, the Phrygian mode. So right off the bat, you've got this semitone. It's got this just kind of flamenco, Spanish sound. That's Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Do, do, do. 
so it's got that Spanish flamenco tone. And then here we go, Lydian mode. Do, 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 do. See that? It's a major mode. You're on a major chord on the four chord. Do, 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 so people call that a sharp four. Because if you imagine, you know, we know we're on the f one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if you analyze it as though the the mode itself is the one, like you're saying now four equals one. You're going like four is one, two, three, sharp four. Now, you're calling that a sharp four. Why? Well, because everything is analyzed relative to a major scale or Ionian mode, which would be one, two, whole, whole, half. You would normally have a, a G natural there. So you could say Lydian is one, two, three, sharp, four, five, six, seven, one. If you notice, it's almost the exact same as a Ionian mode or major scale, but it's got a, instead of having a, a natural four, it has a sharp four. And you can analyze all these modes like that. Phrygian mode that we just did, you know, we know that's the three, but you can uh, analyze it as uh, the one. You're saying three is now one, and this is a two. Or you're like one, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. And you can see that's all compared to if you were on a C sharp major scale. So this shit gets pretty, there's, we can talk, I might do a more in-depth modal analysis video, but that gives you an idea of what you're dealing with. and the it's helpful to compare all the minor modes but let's not do that right now we'll do an overview and then maybe you could do a individual video video on each mode you know and just uh, though I would be inclined to do a video on the minor modes and then compare them to the major modes and then Locrian would be just uh, he'd be his own video he's he doesn't fit in with everybody else um so uh, that was Lydian. Now here we are on the five chord or mixolydian mode. So once again, it sounds like a major scale again. Four, five, six, but instead of a seven, it's got flat seven. That would be like the standard Mixolydian jam, like that, going like E, D. So here actually we are ending on a one, but we're focusing the tonality around got that flat note and a uh, famous thing for that is nah, 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 uh hey jude the ending of that is mixolydian and you know for an example for lydian the four the classic is uh all his modes or you know he's looking down from us from rock and roll heaven 
thinking about his modes. And uh, here we go, uh, six, the Aeolian, also known as the natural minor scale. So this one has two names, and uh, it's the only mode that does, other than Ionian mode, which is called the major scale. And this is called the minor scale, or the natural minor. So you can see that Greek names, the Aeolian, those are the old original, and then, you know, as English, they make little theory books for Cora B. Aaron's theory book. Um, you know, they give them American names, or <laughs> English names. So we got... Do, do, <coughs> do, Beautiful scale. And the thing about this minor mode is it, it has like a full one four five minor that comes along with it. And we'll talk more about that in maybe an Aeolian video, but so and there's a million songs that have uh Aeolian type. And, uh, and then you get to Lockreed, which I don't even know if I can sing off of this, but it's a diminished mode. It's got like a flat everything, flat two, flat three. So that's the overview. And uh, yeah, you can learn your modes, but that's the theory. So you can understand it, like what's going on. And that, you know, they were looking at the color of each mode, that openness, the Spanishness, the Bowiness, or Lydian to me sounds like Bowie or and like and then it goes actually into key um, and then Mixolydian has that beetle sound or it's major and it has one blues note in it really good for songwriting and uh aeolian has got that minor sound and uh locrian has just got a diminished sound but like i use locrian all the time but not so much as a div diminished thing i would use it more if it was like i was playing over e and for example e7 like just in a typical bluesy scenario now Locrian mode is G sharp there, so that goes off of the third of the quarter. Here's a G sharp actually, and you get this. Then maybe go to this chord. So uh, you can use your modes just as a melody. And yeah, people have said to me, especially like, okay, well in that case, why don't we just say I'm playing the major scale starting on the seven? And yeah, you could just say that, <laughs> you could. And uh, what's faster to say is maybe the question, you know, I'm on the major scale starting on the seven, I'm playing Locrian. And uh, anybody, I think though, once you really, get into this shit you start to realize ugh, major scale seven locrian you could just throw it all away once your fingers have the ability to find the notes it's just a certain it's just a sound but to me for sure i think of like if i was doing it there over the third of a chord i'd be like i'm going off the third and then you just choose your color 
And that's what they are. They're little colors, but also it's muscle memory. Like if you have muscle memory on something, you can just get that color, you know, without having to think about fingers at all. And uh, so there's that. And, uh, but also you can change keys. Like if you're writing music, you can change keys along the modal interchange. And that would be if you had all set, that's a separate video too, but that little universe is maybe the most fun aspect of modes is like moving. If you had them all on a central note of D, it would mean you're changing keys along D. Like for example, uh, Beatles. I once had a girl, oh should I say she once had me. Mixolydian scale. On the verse, and then it goes to she asked to stay and she told me in your bridge it goes to Dorian mode along the same pitch so you're getting this major minor shift you're getting a color shift a mood shift which you need for a bridge you know and they just it just works it just adds such a production value to your chord progression to use a modal interchange like that so uh, and uh, other shit, like say you want to play something like this. Say you want to play, uh, I'll go to A. There's like a, a dorky melody. But if you want to be able to do it in three part harmony, you can just, just know your modes. And then bam, triple triple stack it on the recording it's gonna be terrible but um that's some of the ways i know i use it and uh but i've used i use it less and less consciously for sure like it's just you get it in your fingers and then you can just pick and you can blur stuff together and um so yeah, it's, it's learn it and then just, it all just smooshes into one thing. And, uh, but then when you do, say you do find something that you'd need to, like something really tricky, like giant steps, Coltrane, sometimes looking at modes can, can just help piece stuff together. Like for example, if it's in B, B Ionian, and then like the progression goes to, uh, key of G, you could go along B, uh, Phrygian in that key, and then, uh, what's the other key? Oh yeah, or sorry, E flat has now got B flat in it. So it can, you can find, say you run that scale, and then, oh sorry, say in one position you run those three modes then when you're trying to improvise you've got muscle memory on knowing where the color tones are but then I don't know after that try to forget it and just be able to play <laughs> so there I did I started on this one on there and then I went to there and I forget what I did and then I ended it feeling like it was sounding scaly so I threw in some chromatic to I forget what I did, but that's an example of, in that case, it forms like an underpinning that you're not even aware of. And uh, that's a nice thing to have, I think, you know? Because uh, everything looks the same on the fucking guitar. It's like everything could be, like, except for the dots, but even, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to have a kind of lattice of just all the notes available in a given key across all positions and you can kind of you have that in there and then it's like 
it's kind of there and you can you're just cruising along it and uh, but not thinking of it it's uh, yeah, it's really cool man all right modes